Electrify is back, baby, and they're dropping heat after heat. They're holding nothing back with their wireless series of mice. You know we had to cover one of my favorite ones that they've dropped, the MZ1 or the Zeiss Rail, coming from the GOAT RJN. The original corded one has been a staple in my collection for a very long time, so today I want to go over what makes this mouse so special and how it's made its way back to becoming my main. And through this whole process, I hope to inspire you to maybe check out this mouse and also to maybe actually look at your grip style and the things that you're doing and how you're aiming. So let's start off with the build quality and what's changed from the original. It keeps the same dimensions of the original wired one, but this time it has a screw on the back where you can remove the back shell and make it flatter. This is a criticism that I had on the default shells that the hump was a little bit too big, especially since this is a fingertip grip centered mouse. And it would cause the back of your palm to hit the mouse hump. Wasn't a fan of it, but after a while you can get used to it so you can avoid it. Now they put in an extra shell, like I said, that you can place on the back of the mouse, which is a little bit more flat. And I'm happy to report it definitely stays out of the way of your palm. Now they've also added in the same weight distribution screw on the bottom that we saw in the M4 II and the M4. To adjust, you have to loosen both of the screws on the bottom and then slide it to the position that you want, whether you want the weight more forward, whether you want it more back, or somewhere in the middle. Personally, I like to keep mine in the middle because it feels the most balanced to me personally, but that's the beauty of this mouse. You can do whatever the f you want to do. It is USB-C, so now you can charge your mouse overnight by just plugging in your keyboard cable to it. You're not pigeonholed to having that old micro USB, which most cables now aren't even using then you can just plug the dongle into your computer you don't have to have a cable laying around now it does come with a flex cable and it is pretty good if you do want to charge it while you're using it it's very flexible and works well as for the weighs about 0.2 or 0.3 gram difference so nothing huge there it's around that 60 gram weight they quoted 62 on the site but I think that they just want to give themselves a little bit of wiggle room and they've made it now I've heard people saying that they could have made this lighter by taking out the RGB the weight distribution all that stuff all the unnecessary stuff, right? Personally, I think that the best mouse weight is around 60 grams. When I get down to about 40 grams or so, I start to be inconsistent from day to day. One day I'll be a beast, the other day I can't hit a broad side of a barn. 60, I can always feel the mouse. It's light enough so I don't get fatigued. Now you can take the back shell off completely and it gets the mouse down to around 57 grams and it works just fine. The only downside is that your inside of the mouse is going to be exposed. Now the PTFE feet are good they glide well and have a nice thickness to them. Overall, the build quality of this mouse is outstanding. The coating is amazing, stays dry even during hot, sweaty weather. That's right. I also like that where you rest your fingers, it's actually unibody, it's smooth. There's no holes there, so it's very comfortable. I don't know what kind of magic they used if RJN just predicted that we were gonna have our fingers here during fingertip grip, but it works out and it's super comfortable. All right, so we've gone over some of the build quality. Now let's talk about what makes this mouse so special, and that's those comfort grooves on the mouse one and two. These grooves make for an amazing amazing fingertip grip experience because it allows you to pivot the mouse with your fingertips with ease. This is a double-edged sword though because the outside of the mouse flares out so it can tip over if you press towards the edges of the mouse. So keep that in mind if that's something that you like, you will be forced to be in the groove, no pun intended. More on the shape later. Now as for the clicks on this, the side buttons feel slightly better than the original. I say they're on par with my favorite side buttons, the Ultralight 2. It's very, very close. The scroll wheel is textured and has some nice feedback, not super slow, not super fast, but somewhere in the middle. It is a little tough when you do press it down. I wish it was a little bit lighter. Now, after using other mice and then coming back to this, the MZ1 is like a breath of fresh air. The mouse one and two are super crispy and responsive. Using the slider on the bottom, you can turn on the mouse and at the same time, choose what this top button does. It can do the DPI or it can do the RGB, or you can choose it to be a page down, which you can bind in game. Overall, I'm a huge fan of all the buttons on the mouse. I think they nailed it on that front. And right now, what you're seeing is Extra Fire really in their bag with their latest wireless offerings. Also, I forgot to mention there's another button on the bottom for the pulling rate. To change it to bouncing, you just hold the two side buttons and the scroll wheel down, and it'll change colors. You can also change the lift off distance by holding the side buttons in the mouse one and two. And you can change that between one millimeter and two millimeters. I love that this can be all done on board without the need of software. I'm looking at you, Razor Synapse. Before we go on to talk about that shape you know I gotta drop that sound test for you guys so let's drop it
Now we touched on the shape a little bit in the bun, so let's finish it here. Now my hands are on the medium side and it just fits like a glove. They also have these nice ledges on the side which helps you pick up the mouse with your thumb and your ring finger. You actually don't even need your pinky to pick up this mouse. Very comfortable. It just adds a little bit of stability when you have that pinky on there. Now you can't use this for claw grip, but it feels unusual, right? It feels wrong. Like the hump hits the middle of your palm instead of the bottom of your palm. And if you do the one where you have your wrist floating, right? Or, you know, have your palm sitting a little bit higher up, it just looks ridiculous and you're just way too high up. You just don't have enough leverage on the mouse. I don't like it. And you definitely can't palm grip this mouse. It's just out of the question. Just go with the M4 or the M4 II. Since the size isn't too big and it isn't too small and it's a fingertip grip mouse, it can work from anything from a small hand to a large hand. Hopefully we can see a couple of different sizes in the future. That would be pretty cool to see. But for now, I think this would work for most people. Now the original MZ1 was a 3389 sensor, but they went down to the 3370, which isn't a bad thing. As the 3370 is the standard for wireless right now and performs just as good as the 3389. The 3389 is just more of a flex in terms of DPI. 75 hours of battery life could be better, especially for the asking price. I would love to see this at over 100 hours. 75 is still a good amount of time and does beat out other mice in this category like the Super Light or the V2 Pro from Razer, which only have 70 hours. Now, if you guys have been watching my videos for a while, you'll know that I recently switched over to low sensitivity and arm aiming. Now, when I did that, I switched off of my main grip style, which was fingertip grip and went over to claw grip. But this mouse has allowed me to unlock something I never expected when combining everything. I'm talking the arm aiming, the low sense, and the fingertip grip all together with the floating wrist. You get so much precision and you get the stability of the arm aiming and then you add even more precision on top of that with your fingertips. It was like the last piece of the puzzle, the cherry on top of the sundae, if you will. Now I know a lot of you guys have been asking me, do I still float my wrist? Yes, I do. And instead of having my palm on it, I just back it up a little bit and just have my fingertips on there. And since this mouse is so well balanced and the shape, the ledges, the grooves and the mouse one and two feel so good. It just feels so natural when you are swiping. Like I can make the huge swipes that I couldn't before with the claw grip and heavier mice. And I also have less pressure on the mice now since my palm is moved back. I did, however, change my fingertip grip slightly to where I'm not so much like pushing and pulling so dramatically anymore, but instead I'm kind of stiff and straight, kind of like what Rocket Jump Ninja does himself. And then when I do need that added little bit of oomph or that headshot, mobility, I can just move my fingers or curl my fingers down when I need it and I just hit the shot every single time. Well, not every time, that's a gross overstatement, but I'm, I'm hitting a lot more headshots now. Whereas when I would claw grip or have my palm on the back of the mouse, I would always be hitting like the chest or the neck area. I just needed that little bit more oomph and this gives it to me. And if you're doing like a track heavy game, forget about it. Can't get anything better than this for tracking right? Like fingertip grip with this mouse is bananas. It's almost impossible to lose tracking unless your sensitivity is just super high or, you know, your just reaction times are just that bad. But this mouse is definitely going to make tracking way more easier. And the wireless performance has been perfect from the moment that I've got it. And, you know, I can't really find fault with this mouse other than the price. Now 120 seems very expensive, not going to lie to you. I wish this was like $100, but it's hard to find fault with this mouse and they did everything right. And honestly, I think this price, a lot of it's coming from the deal that they have with RJN. You know, they got to cut him in on the mouse profits. There's nothing wrong with that. You got to get paid and you got to think of it as he's using all of his knowledge and experience reviewing mice and putting that into this mouse and you're able to receive it and benefit from it. This mouse is definitely in the top three. I don't care what anybody says. It just does everything right. The only downside is that this mouse is not for everybody. It's not gonna work with everybody's grip, but hey, it brought me back home to fingertip grip. Maybe it can do the same for you. I don't know. I don't know. Try it. All right, guys, so that's gonna do it for this video. It has been your boy, BT. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.